Hello, my name is Donna Hutchinson and I'm the owner of On The Edge Fitness Educators and I'm also a personal trainer and today I want to talk to you about the fitness ball. First we're going to start by looking at the correct size of the ball that you want to choose. So when you do purchase a ball, make sure that it's inflated first and then have a seat on the ball itself and ensure that when you're sitting on the ball that your thighs are actually parallel to the floor. If they're lower, then your ball is too small and if you find when you're sitting on the ball that your thighs are too high, then the ball is actually too big. Place it against the wall, turn around and place the ball at the small of your back. Bring your feet forward and we're going to begin this exercise which is going to work your quadriceps, your glute muscles and your calves and hamstrings as well. Make sure your feet are parallel and then just simply have a seat as if you're sitting in a chair. At the end you're going to see that your knees are lined up over your ankles and that your hips fall no lower than your knee and then come back up. You're going to do this for about 15 to 20 repetitions but because you're using your own body weight you may find this actually quite easy. Just remember to sit back, keep your body up nice and strong. If you can, try and keep your stomach tight. So if someone was going to tap you in your belly, you want to keep that nice and tight. All you would simply have to do is shift the ball over to one side slightly, bring your toe to balance, and then shift your weight 80% onto that one leg. Come down, you can hold the ball about your balance. And then to make that even more challenging, you would simply lift the leg and come down. You'll probably find that you won't go down as deep when you do this exercise on the one leg. And just remember to repeat it on both sides. If we turn to the side now, we're going to be working our muscles along the outside. Bring the ball to your hip, make sure you lean, have a slight lean in your body, lift that top leg. You want to ensure that your hip here is nice and straight. So for instance, try not to bring the leg forward. If you bring the leg forward, you're going to work the muscles to the front of your hip. Typically these muscles are already short from sitting in your chairs all day long. Bring that leg back and lift. You're going to feel that's working the outside of your thigh. Body up nice and tall. 15 to 20 repetitions and repeat on both sides. Next exercise is going to work our lower legs, our calf muscles. Bring the ball up high. We're going to have a slight lean and then bring your chest to the ball. Your heels will lift up off the floor, come up onto your toes and then back down. Rising up onto the toes and down. To make this exercise more challenging, you would go onto one leg. And if you want, you can let go of the ball and this will challenge your balance as well. Come away from the ball now in order to work the back of the arm and also the chest muscles and the shoulder. Bring the ball up nice and high. Your hands, wrists and shoulders should be even. Step away from the ball, bend your elbows, lean the chest into the ball and then push back. When you push back, make sure that you do not lock out your elbows. So you don't want to hyperextend, just as I'm demonstrating here. You want to keep a soft bend in the elbow. Exhale as you come up. And all of the exercises in a difficult phase, you'll be exhaling. It's important to breathe. If that feels really easy, you can actually step a little bit further away, lower the ball slightly, and this will become more challenging. We're now going to go to the floor. And if you have carpet, then you won't probably need a mat underneath your knees. But if you are on hardwood floors or laminates, make sure that you do have a mat for the next couple of exercises so that you can protect your knees. The first exercise we're going to do is actually going to work also the back of your arms, but the broad muscle in your, in your back as well called your latissimus dorsi. And I'm going to show a couple of different options for different levels. First thing you're going to want to do is to kneel and then bring your hands on the ball. You're going to walk the ball out so that your fingertips are just touching the ball. From this position, you're going to hinge from your knees and as you do so, you're going to allow your arms to go as straight as you can and then you're going to simply pull everything back in. Now when you're first starting this exercise, you don't need to actually go as far as I just demonstrated. You can do little half movements to sort of give yourself an opportunity just to feel the exercise. And as you build confidence, 
you can start to bring your body out a little bit further. And if you do notice muscles shaking, that's totally fine. That's just your body's way of adapting to a new exercise movement. Try and do about 15 to 20 of these and you can vary the range of motion. So you can do a few that are a bit smaller and then a few that are also a bit longer. If you do notice your abdominals working, that's fine too because they actually are involved in this exercise. If both of those options are really easy for you, then you can take this exercise up onto your toes. So now I'm in a bridge position and I'm ensuring that I'm not allowing my back to sag. So for instance, if you have this posture, this puts a lot of pressure on your lumbar spine. Bring your back up. By the same token, you also don't want your hips to lift. You want to keep everything in a nice plank position. This is going to be a little bit more challenging now. You do exactly the same exercise, but you'll also take smaller movements in the shoulder, just rolling the ball forward and back. Make sure that you do breathe. And then when you're done, come back down and take a break. So you're going to notice the backs of your arms, your back, and also all through your midsection. The next exercise we're going to do is a push-up, similar to what we did on the wall. We'll do it in this knee position first. You can bring your hands a little bit wider to the ball. You can also point your fingertips down as well. Bring it to the widest part of the ball and then just come down and push up. When you come down, make sure that you're not going down too far. If I have a look, the elbow and the shoulder should be lined up and then push up. Breathing out as you come up. To make the exercise more challenging, you rise up onto your toes again, keeping in mind the back position, come down and back up. And all that shaking is fantastic because you're really having to stabilize your whole body with an uneven surface underneath you. Very effective. We're now working the backs of the arms, the front of the shoulder, and your chest muscle, along with all of your abdominal muscles as well. We can turn the ball to the side and turn our bodies to the side. Bring that ball right into your hip, slide around it, similar to the one that we did on the wall, this time in a side lying position. Make sure your belly button and pubic bone are lined up. Keep your leg back and we can simply lift and lower with the option to point the toe or to bring the toe up to the shin, whatever feels more comfortable. If when pointing the toe you'd like to make it more challenging, hold the leg up and just do small circles. You'll notice that you'll be working the side muscles as well as your glute muscles towards the back and then you can go back to lifting and lowering. Remember to do it on both sides as well, 15 to 20 repetitions. The last exercise we'll do to work the lower back is we'll lean onto the ball, bring your hands forward, extend your legs, keep your neck in line with your spine, and we'll simply lift one leg, extend, and the opposite arm, thumb comes up, into an opposite arm and leg movement and bring them both down. Repeat that on the other side, lift the leg, extend, and thumbs up, reach. And then repeat. And if you like, you can do the arm and leg simultaneously. Remember to think long, reach the fingertips, reach the toes, and back down. And if that feels really easy, you can always try and lift your two arms. And that would be a complete workout. And if you do all of those exercises, it should take you probably not any longer than 10 minutes. And when people say they don't have enough time to exercise, 10 minutes isn't a long time and you've got a full body workout. Mm -hmm.